<laughs> I was nervous coming to school the very first time. I started school and I liked it. Yeah, that's what I just like school every time I go there. My favorite thing is getting pencils. I think I was a bit worried and my first friend was Maisie. Um, I love school and it's my first day. That first day at school, long awaited, long anticipated, but still teachers say worrying numbers of children simply not prepared. We asked 100 teachers from reception classes across England and Wales to tell us what they're seeing. Their voice memos paint an alarming picture with more children this year than before at school but not ready for school. Some do still come in pull-ups and they're still drinking out of baby bottles. They're unable to talk because they've always got a dummy in. Talking to them in full sentences is becoming much more difficult as often children aren't able to string together a full comprehensive sentence. There are lots of fussy eaters with parents telling us that they'll only eat chicken nuggets and chocolate spread sandwiches. More than ever, children are starting school with already decayed teeth, teeth missing that have been taken out by the dentist, or silver teeth to replace teeth that have been removed. We surveyed 100 reception teachers. More than 80% say increasing numbers of children weren't adequately prepared to start school this year. The number of children who aren't toilet trained is rising according to two-thirds of teachers. And nearly 60% have at least one child who still needs a dummy. Almost three quarters have at least one child in their class who had no idea how to use a book. What we're finding is that you know schools are really having to, to step up to bridge the gap between um, what perhaps used to happen at home and, uh, and in school. That, that There used to be that expectation that children are at a certain level. You know, we're having to do more and more to, to make sure that children are at that level or that we've got catch-up things in place if they're not. Of course, we expect schools to cope um, with whoever comes through the door. But when we can see what they're having to cope with, is stuff that actually should happen in the previous phase, whatever it is. We're shortchanging children if we actually leave them through primary education, unable to do things that, that, that they're perfectly capable of learning and to enjoy doing when they're three and four and five years old. At the heart of school life, speech. But something as seemingly straightforward as talking is now, for increasing numbers of children, a problem. Teachers told us speech and language ability is dramatically declining, with more than 80% reporting more problems with this year's new starters. And on that constantly asked question, is the digital world impacting on our children? This is what the teachers told us. One child given a book to read tries to swipe it like a tablet. Children are going to sleep with a bedtime story not read by parents, but by the digital speaker system Alexa. And some children's language skills are so poor they think their classmates are speaking a foreign language. Communication charity ICANN runs sessions in primary schools to help improve children's language skills. Welcome to our Talk Boost lesson. Today we're going to be playing lots of games and learning lots of new words. Now our first game, we're going to play Word Bingo. These children just need a little extra help, but others face much bigger challenges. Bingo! Speech and language skills are absolutely essential for children to be able to cope at school. In some areas, particularly areas of disadvantage, there can be upwards of 50% of children starting school with poor language. They've just got a few words, they're just maybe talking in one or, or two word sentences, they find it difficult to listen, pay attention. Very often parents just don't know that they that, that, that um, there's a way that children's language can be supported and that they've got a really crucial role in that. And children are arriving at the school gate without other basic skills. Toilet training, one of the most common problems now being faced by teachers. Hello, you're through to Eric. You're speaking with Natalie. How can I help? 
This helpline is run by Eric, the children's bladder and bowel charity. And it's not just preschool children whose parents need support. So this is a reception class he's just started. Oh, OK. And was he ha having accidents before he started school or is this just since he started? Laura contacted Eric when she was still struggling to toilet train her son, Freddie, as he was starting school. Can you remember when you first went to school? Hmm? Can you remember wearing your nappy when you went to school? Mm -hmm. I mean, it carried on till he was four years old and then we had the prospect of school coming up. And obviously you want them potty trained for school. So I really was at my wit's end. I had to tell the headmistress, you know, he, he needs to wee into his pull-ups. Laura says it wasn't for the want of trying, though, and with help from the charity and support from the school, Freddie was soon out of nappies. Not all families are as keen to end the nappy phase ahead of school. One teacher told us a mum reacted with hostility when it was suggested her child needed to be toilet trained. We're seeing an increasing trend in children actually starting school in nappies. Something as fundamental as toilet training is being tackled so much later. Um, you know, it's very, very likely that the majority of those children could be potty trained from the age of a, around two. Throughout our research, teachers listed a complex mix of reasons so many children are not ready for school, including technology, busy parents and poverty. With no easy solution, in the meantime, they say teachers are having to step in to fill in the gaps trying to make sure children who need extra help get it. So as staff, it's our job to know those children and we have to adjust our practice to support them. So it could be through reducing our language. So instead of us where we're having a conversation now, I would just potentially be using just one word for a child, uh, like car, for example. Um, and then you build it up. You'd say red car as their language develops and then you develop it, to, you know, moving it onto the red car went to the shops. I mean, I think we've had to have a rethink, really, about um, our role as educators. Um, you know, we need to start with where the child is. So if a child has got delayed speech and language, does need toilet training, then that's, that's the, the targets for that child. You know, there's no point in having literacy targets for children who aren't talking. Three quarters of the teachers told us their school started this year already in the middle of a funding crisis. It's all added pressure when you want to make sure every child, whether they arrived ready or not, has the same chances. School is good for me. I like playing. When I started at school, I was happy. Thank you very much. That special report by Jackie Longler. Joining me now is Natasha Bauer, who's an assistant head teacher at a primary school in West London. Christina O'Donnell, a journalist and author who now runs a parenting charity. And by Belinda Palmer, who gave up her job in tech to run a campaign highlighting the dangers of digital addiction. Welcome to you all. Let me start with you, Natasha. As a teacher, I mean, I have to say, the statistics in that film are alarming, as are some of the details, like, mm -hmm. you know, swiping right on a book. We'll talk about that in a minute. But why do you think this increase is taking place? I, um, there's a number of factors that go into play um, with the increase of children not being um, reception ready. And I do think technology plays a big part in it because a lot of parents are leaving um, their children alone with technology. But I also think that there's, um, poverty has a, a lot to play in it. I've um, taught in the same school for, um, in the same area for over 10 years. And although it's a deprived area, um, Poverty is having more of an effect on the children. So we go to home visits. Children are staying in um, lower, uh, in, in one bedroom. Mm. There's a whole family in one bedroom. Um, there's an increase of more parents going out to work. There's um, an increase of being rehoused and rehoused again. And so we're The impact seeing, of austerity, yeah, essentially. Right. Basically, yeah. And, um, it's, and it's increasing. And every, every year, there's more children with speech and language difficulties, more children entering school that... Um, are wearing um, nappies mm. or on potty trained, and more children coming to school. They um, they use dummies, they use bottles, and they haven't been trained, and they're not um, school ready. And Christina, you're nodding. Does that mean you agree? I agree up to a point. I think that although family income is important, family relationships is even more important. And I think that what those children were showing was a lack of interaction with 
grown-ups or uh, older siblings who have um, mastered these skills. And what we're seeing again and again and again in our parenting charity mm-hmm. called The Parenting Circle is parents who are feeling overwhelmed, isolated, mm-hmm. and absolutely incapable yeah. of teaching children the but most But they might not have the time or the money to do so. I mean, if you have to work two jobs in order to make True, ends meet... You know. but, but what I think is, is the bottom line is isolation. You know, what we used to have, I think that the difference yes. between a yeah. few years ago and today is we used to have either an extended family or the neighbors or both mm-hmm. around us from where, from whose examples we could learn. And but we I, just yeah. don't have that anymore. So is technology the real culprit here then? Because I'm part of that isolation is, you know, kids left on their own with, with a Alexa. tablet or with, with Alexa, Alexa, Alexa instead of mother. Yeah, I, I think it is. I'm, I don't want to make technology the enemy because there are many benefits to technology. But we you used to be a great advocate of technology. I, I still love technology, but we cannot deny what I'm worried about is our children's lack of empathy. You know, what we've got here is... You know, I don't think Alexa's a nanny. She's almost a, you know, technology's a digital sedative. You know, it blunts our children's emotions. And what I'm worried about is, you know, because I have teenagers, when they're on their device, they're not experiencing pain or joy in the mm. same way and learning empathy because empathy is a learned skill. So you've taken the next step. You've Apparently, you've actually locked up your son's devices <laughs> and your own in a safe. Well, I've tried. I am by no means. I am work in progress. But I guess the point is, let's not put all the responsibility on the parents. Yeah. Let's look at the technology companies because they're sprinkling behavioral cocaine on these devices. And our kids are addicted. And I, as a mum, I can't compete with those levels of dopamine. But it's they're, so easy to blame technology, isn't it? I mean, and you've, you've done the right thing. You've locked it up. Well, I, I haven't because my son hacked the Wi-Fi the other day and I had, you know, we don't know Your how... Your son to... hacked the Wi-Fi? He yeah. did. I think the point is... How old is he? Four? No. 13. Right, okay. But it's very difficult for parents to navigate this new world and I think what you're seeing is a correlation... Mm if not a causation between those behaviours and the impact of technology. A lot of this, Natasha, ends up on, you know, the, on, the, on the desk of teachers. Yeah. Teachers have to do, that's the whole point of Jackie's film, teachers mm-hmm. have to do the work that should be done at home. So blaming technology, does yeah. that ring true to you or is that a cop out? Technology does have a part to play because a lot of the time the children are left alone with the uh, tablet, the um, swiping, and the story where they said that the um, children are swiping books, that's true. Oh, every day. Wow. Um, but I do think... Um, that's that's te- a true story, right? It is a true story, wow. yeah. Um, but I do think that um, the reason p- parents use technology is because they have very, very busy lives. And I would agree that you said about the um, families, relationships. The relationships. Right. If, but I also think that the reason behind a lot of it is because of poverty. Because if you don't have that rela- you don't have that time because you're working double shifts, you're mm-hmm. working different right. shifts, you're working in one room, everybody's in one room... Where are we going to sit together to have that but meal this, to talk this to each other? But this the, yeah. cuts across the class divide exactly. as well, doesn't it? It's not just poor families, it's also middle class middle families. Middle class families it's suffer from families. it as well. And in fact, what we have found with our parenting circle is that middle class parents are as eager to be supported because we get two junior staff from each school to uh, lead As eager to be supported? As eager to be supported and, and equally to share keen... their triumphs right. and, and failures with other parents as lower income families And prepared are. to ask for it or to embarrass to, to ask, ask for it. it and in fact to demand it. Right. Okay. And I think your point about isolation, I think we're going to look back at this period in time and think what on earth were we doing with our children, giving them that access te- to technology? It's like the smoking industry. In the 70s, you go to the doctors and they'd say, if you're a bit stressed, have a cigarette. Now we give our parents devices. Yeah. It's very hard to control the content. I honestly think we will look back and think... But it's about managing doing. the technology. You can't of cut technology out of kids' it's, lives. I mean, it's, it is an course. important part of their lives. It's a very important, and it plays an incredibly good educational role, but it's very hard to navigate. But because Belinda, these design, the, the, the technology is designed to be so addictive. Yes, but I think that the problem here is parents. If children keep seeing their parents addicted to the screen, not, not making eye contact with the mm-hmm. child because mm-hmm. they're checking on their emails... How can we expect the children to be above and beyond their parents' addiction? Yeah. I think that's true. I think we as parents, well, models, I mean, I've told my children to get off their phone while I'm Are on you, my phone. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> so you, you put your phone on I, 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 I think we cannot just blame the parents. We have to look at the whole ecosystem. We have to look at the technology. What difference well. can government make and here? Government. 
I think um, there's a lot of changes that they can make. First of all, um, there needs to be more money um, pumped into early childhood development, learning behind it, because there's a lot of places where parents got together, used to get together, children's centres. And also the short closed, start programme yeah, has been cut by 62% yeah, since definitely. 2010. So yeah. people are not getting out. They're not um, socialising with other parents. So when they start school in reception, maybe that's the first time they've come across another parent with the same age child mm. because they haven't gone to um, these play groups yeah. they, they used Christine, to. Christine, it so, is about the money, isn't it? Well, it's really important. I, I think, mean, I think children's centres and the reduction in children's centres was a terrible, terrible uh, problem. But again, I think if you can find a relationship and it's in a, it is in somebody's home or it's in a classroom when it's not being used by the school, you don't even need that much money. You need an intervention that is absolutely targeted at relieving teachers. But you're talking about family and community and yeah. social absolutely. networks, and that's an entirely different question altogether. But I think it's also about okay. educating parents even before they right. have the children about how important exactly. communicating okay. And, Targeted um, intervention. Yeah. We, we could go on, but we can't. We've run out of time. Thank you very much to all of you. Uh, Natasha Barrett, Christina Adorno, Belinda Palmer. Thanks very much to you. Thank you. John.